My name is Matt Lawn. Um, I am a neonatologist at the University of North Carolina and I am the PI for a few of the trials in the Pediatrics Trials Network. UNC uh, really has a couple of different um, roles in, in the Pediatric Trials Network. One is as a site for some of the trials and so we are enrolling in the opportunistic studies, which Mickey Cohen Wolkowitz is the PI of. But also, uh, I'm a member of the steering committee of the Pediatric Trials Network, and so I'm actually starting to run a few of the trials as well. So there are two trials that are getting ready to get started over the next 12 months. The first is an anti-staphylococcal trial. That's a, 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 an organism, a, a bacteria, that cr is usually on the skin of people, babies, children and it can get inside the body and cause lots of problems. Um, and so there are three different medicines that are used to treat the staph, the staphylococcal infections, also called staph. One is ticarcillin clavulanate, or ticarclav. The other one is rifampin. And another one is uh, clindamycin. And so these are all three anti-staph drugs. Uh, they're usually ancillary drugs. They're not always used by themselves. Sometimes they are but particularly with rifampin and clindamycin, they're usually ancillary medications. We don't really know exactly how they move around the body when they're given to infants and children. We know that in adults that um, we can tell how, the, how one's body uses them, but when you start taking the information from adults and moving it down to children, it really becomes a, a problem. And so it's important to study the medications in the population of interest. So for the staph trials, we have um, Investigational new drugs or INDs for two of the medications. We we're submitting the third. And the nice thing about this study is that um, traditionally the group, the Pediatric Trials Network, has um, traditionally, it's only been in place for a little over a year, but uh, up to this point we've really focused on single molecules and single PK trials. The nice thing about this study is that we'll take a common um, problem, which is staphylococcal infections, and we'll have three different medicines that will uh, treat those, those infections, and we'll run the trial uh, concurrently, so it's like three trials in one. Um, we think this is a, un a new and a unique, efficient manner to study PK um, in, in medicines. It will really improve the, the efficiency of the trial in that there'll be one PI, that will be me, um, then there'll be one, um, one project lead, There'll be one phone call per week to talk about the trial. There'll be somewhere between six and, nine, um, six and nine sites that will be competitive enrollment. And so they'll know that uh, there will be others that will be involved. Uh, and so as, as, different, as different cohorts of the medications fill up, we can, we can add another cohort. Um, we can ask the sites to target a different cohort, which is a much more efficient way of, of um, of, of the trial, trial design. The other, the other thing that's nice is that if, a, if one of the sites isn't doing very well and you have a three-site trial, that's a third of your sites. If we have nine sites and one site's not doing very well, then that's you know, a little over 10%. So it's, it's a very nice way of, of, of sort of combining um, the infrastructure of the pedi pediatric trials network. So we are um, finishing up the protocol right now and that we'll be submitting that officially to the pediatric trials network. We're working again on budget. Uh, it'll go to the Daisy Safety and Monitoring Committee uh, for review, and then it'll go to the Data Coordinating Center for review as well. And then hopefully first patient enrolled will be uh, in the first half of, of 2012. And then it'll run over about 12 to 18 months.